What's up guys, Rhett Tolleson, KST Customs. Uh, today we're going to be installing a set of bars on a 2013 Street Glide. Um, from 2008, 2013, uh, that uh, model years, um, you can install a 10 inch bar using your stock brake, clutch, uh, and electrical. Um, it requires a little bit of rerouting, which we're gonna go over today. Uh, but this will cover the street glides, electric glides, ultra classics for 2008, 2013. Uh, this is a one of our employees' bikes here. Uh, he's got a set of our 10 inch Mayhem baggers on it. <clears throat> We've got a, a new product that we're getting ready to release and we're gonna be installing it today. Um, but I'll go over uh, the teardown, uh, the disassembly, um, the internal wiring and then the reassembly and we'll go over a few other products uh, that we sell uh, at, at the same time. All right, so before we uh, start disassembling the bike, we're going to cover up our tins, gas tank, fender. Um, we also have our bags for the brake and clutch uh, assemblies. Our fender cover. Uh, you can purchase these online. Um, we actually had these made. All right, so first we're going to take off our outer fairing. Um, we've got four bolts on the inside here. Um, one that's kind of, one on each side that's visible, and then there's one on each side um, that's kind of in between the front end. Uh, you actually have to turn the wheel to get to it. So we like to use a center jack uh, to lift our bike up. If you don't have one, you can do it on the kickstand. Um, you just have to be able to turn the front wheel left and right so you can get to that bolt. Uh, these are Torx 25 uh, bolt heads. Um, so we're gonna remove those on the inside. Uh, we've got three um, that hold the windshield on. We'll remove those last and then we'll take our outer shell off. This one's kind of hidden um, in between the, the front end. If you can turn the wheel, get to it fairly easy. All right, we'll go to the other side. All right, we get our three that are uh, holding the windshield. Uh, you can use a helping hand or you can just kind of put your hip into it, hold it from falling. All right, remove your windshield. All right, now our outer shell is ready to come off. Uh, we've got a, our headlight here, it's plugged in. We'll pop our shell and then we'll unplug our headlight. This is an aftermarket headlight. Uh, I believe the stock one has a high-low plug. It's two separate plugs. Um, they should be labeled, but if not, you might wanna you know, take a picture, make some kind of diagram where you know what's what. A uh, company called Rita Innovations uh, make these fairing docks. Um, they also make some saddlebag docks. Uh, it's good quality stuff. It protects, um, protects your parts, keeps them out of the way. Uh, we use them all the time at the rallies. Throw your windshield in there as well. All right, now we're gonna take our, our frame bolts out, hold our blinkers on. Um, those are going to be a Torx 40, two on each side. And then we've also got this trim piece that's underneath our ignition switch. Um, there's a bolt on each side there. Those are T25. We're also going to take our ignition out. Um, this is going to require the key. Uh, so make sure you have it before you start the installation. Um, it's, it, it can be tricky, but it's a, it's a simple process. Um, so we'll go over that as well. All right, so we're gonna pop these out, Torx 40. Uh, we've also, uh, Keith has our uh, trailer tie downs on here. Um, so they'll come off with the blinker. Um, 
There is a plug that we'll unplug. All right, now we're gonna unplug our blinker. Uh, you may have a zip tie uh, that you need to cut. Um, like I said, this one's already got bars on it, so it's not completely stock. Um, but our blinker plug's gonna be a black, purple, and blue plug. So unplug it, and we will put our blinker out of the way so that it doesn't get damaged. All right, same thing on the other side. Remove our plug. I right, may have to cut another zip tie on this side. Same things, black, purple, and blue wire. Disassemble, put your blinker out of the way. All right, now we're gonna get our two bolts that hold our trim piece underneath our ignition. These are T25s. One on this side, and then same thing on the other. So now we're gonna pop our ignition out. Uh, you may wanna move your tank cover out of the way for just a moment. Um, the way this works, you're gonna turn your switch to the fork lock position. Um, underneath the whole switch, there is a tiny plug, a uh, tiny button. We're gonna put our key in, turn it, put our key in, press the button, and turn our key counterclockwise, and the whole switch assembly is gonna come out. All right, so we'll turn our switch. Key in, you'll feel the button once you put your finger under there. Press the button, counterclockwise, whole switch comes out. All right, you've got a, a little nut here, a couple of spacer pieces. Um, I'm gonna use an adjustable wrench. Take that off, Just let it unthread. You got two spacer pieces here, one metal, one plastic. And then a little diagram here. It will come out as well. All right, so now that we've got our ignition switch out of the way, we're just gonna pull this trim piece back um, just so we can move freely and get out of our way. Um, and when we get to the point of rotating the fairing back, uh, we'll have full access to our riser bolts. All right, so now let's put our tank cover um, back in position and we're gonna remove our brake, our clutch and brake uh, lever assemblies off of the handlebars. Uh, we've got our protective bags here that we'll put them in. Um, you can use anything. Um, we like to use these just because they cinch up and they won't fall off. Uh, these are Torx 25 bolts. Um, so we're gonna pop them off and we'll go to the next step. You may have to loosen up uh, the switch housing. Uh, as you can see here, um, everything's slid up so far to this welded joint that my uh, brake assembly or my clutch assembly won't come loose. Just loosen up a little bit where it'll slide out and it'll come off. Bag it up. And now we will get our brake. Our brake side. All right, now we'll move on to rotating our fairing back. All right, our fork shroud, uh, we can remove it. I like to just sit it here on the front fender. Uh, you can move it completely out of the way, uh, but it won't be in the way right there. Now our fairing, uh, it take a little effort, um, but we're gonna pick up on it and then it'll rotate back towards us. All right, so pick up and lay it back. 
just so you have access to the risers here. All right, so like I've mentioned a couple times, um, we already have a set of our Mayhem baggers on this bike. With the stock location of the electrical plugs, um, you'll normally find them here on the sides. There's a little metal piece here um, with a little tit on it that the, the plug actually nests onto. So if you're doing a, a stock setup, that's where you'll be able to find your left and right switch harness plugs. Your throttle by wire plug is just gonna be kind of floating here in this area. Um, I'll show you where we've got these plugs now uh, on the front side. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have rerouted the location for these plugs, uh, which allows us to uh, install a set of 10 inch bars without extending the electrical. Uh, you've got one here, one here, and then our throttle by wire, which will unplug from the front. Um, but these just have a, a clip button. You're gonna press it, and it'll pop right out. Same thing on the other side. All right, we'll go back to the front and get our throttle by wire. All right, same thing. Gonna press our little clip button, pull right out. All right, so we've got everything unplugged. Uh, if it's a stock setup, you may wanna go ahead and pull your uh, switch harnesses you know, out from inside the fairing. Um, we're gonna remove our four riser bolts. Uh, these right here are Torx 40. Some of them come with a quarter inch uh, hex head. So we're gonna pop them out and then we'll be ready to start our internal wiring. You may want a helping hand for this uh, or you can just kinda let the bar rest on your hip. You just don't want it to fall and hit the gas tank. Okay, so we're ready for our internal wiring uh, process. Um, this is a little in depth. Um, you got a lot of deep pinning to do. Um, I highly recommend uh, taking pictures of the wire locations, or you can draw you a map. Uh, just make sure you know, you know which way the plug is oriented. Um, otherwise, you can uh, repin the wires backwards. I've done it. Um, also on the throttle by wire, uh, you're gonna have six wires on it. I'll show you in detail. Um, but there's two red, two black, and two white. Uh, the two different groups are in a yellow sleeve and a black sleeve, so we wanna make sure that we have that oriented correctly. Um, so we'll go over taking the uh, switch housings off, uh, taking the grips off, deep in the wires, and uh, pulling the wires out, and then we'll go into loading them into the new bars. All right, first thing I like to do is deep in everything. Um, this plug here, it's got a little kind of yellow plastic insert. Um, it's got two holes in it. You can grab those with a set of needle nose. Um, they may have to be, you know, a really skinny, pointy set of needle nose to get down in there, but just grab it, give it a good pinch. And that whole thing will come out. Same thing on the other one. Give it a good pinch. Pop it right out. Throttle by wire, same thing. All right, so on the throttle by wire, this is what I was saying. You've got six wires, two red, two white, two black. You got a group of three and a yellow sleeve a group of three and a black sleeve. So when you're taking your pictures, just make sure you know, make sure you can see that black sleeve in the picture and the orientation of the plug. On the yellow sleeve, make sure the yellow's in the picture and the orientation of the plug. If you get them backwards, as soon as you fire the bike up, it's gonna read full throttle. So it's just gonna whoa. So just make sure you pay attention there. All right. Inside of this plug here, for each wire, there is a little bitty tab. You're gonna, I like to use a small flathead screwdriver. Um, you know, if you're desperate, you can use a paper clip, um, but just something small with a flat edge, preferably. 
but the tiny little clips in there, it's like a door. You're gonna lift up on the door. I don't know that you can see it. Uh, it's pretty, pretty small, but you're gonna lift up on the door and pull the wire out at the same time. So grab, grab the back side of the wire, flat head in, it'll pull right out of the back. Same thing for every one of them. We're gonna to continue to do this until all of our wires are depinned. Another option on this, if you just don't wanna deal with depinning them, you can always just cut the wires, you know, maybe leave about three or four inches uh, away from the plug, cut them, pull them through the bar, solder them back together. Um, I think that route is harder, but some people just don't like dealing with the pinning and the depinning. All right, we got all the left side done. I'm gonna switch over to the throttle side. Um, throttle side switch harness. It's the exact same process. Just make sure you got good pictures of the wire locations and the plug orientation. I'm just gonna keep doing that until all of them are depinned. All right, now we got all of our throttle side switch harness. Now we're gonna move on to the throttle by wire. Same thing with it. Just make sure you got good pictures um, of the sleeves and the wire orientations with the plug. Same type of disassembly. A little door clips. A little pressure, pull out. A little pressure, out. Just keep going until they're all removed. All right, now we're gonna disassemble our uh, switch housings, um, remove them from the bar, slide the grips out, and pull our electrical harnesses out of the bar. If this is a stock setup, um, if it's a non-CVO, your wiring will be external, um, so you won't have to pull your wires out of the bar. Uh, you'll simply just disassemble the, the switch housings and they'll be able to remove freely. All right, these are Torx 25. Got one up top and then one kind of down low. It's a little clamshell set up. Slide your grip off and just kind of let them hang freely. All right, same thing on the other side. One up top. One down low. Open them up, slide your grip off. All right, for this part, you can put your bars in a vise. Uh, we like to just put them in our lap. Uh, if you see us at an event, um, that's how you'll see us doing it. But um, start with the clutch side. Just kind of back feed the wires out of here. All right, go to the throttle side. I like to do the throttle by wire first. It doesn't really matter. that out of the way. All right, now our switch harness. 
Also, don't just jerk these out uh, if they are internally wired. Um, if they're external, it's not a big deal, but kind of want to feed them through the slot and then pull them out of the slot in the handle. All right, now we're ready to start loading them in our new bars. All right, so this is how your bars will come when we ship them to you. I don't recommend uh, taking the foam off unless you see you know, visual damage from shipping. You know, if the foam looks like it's been tore or it's been rubbed, then you can undo the foam and inspect it. Our quality control standards are really, really high uh, as far as what goes out the door um, with the finish. Um, so we try to make sure that, you know, the bars are in good shape so that when you get them and you're ready to do the install process, you don't have to unwrap them. Um, so what we'll do though is we'll tear off small section so that we can get to the handle. Just want to be able to access this slot here. Same thing on the other side. And then the same thing in the middle here. Just going to tear this open just a little bit more. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to blow us a string uh, through the bar. I like to th start with the throttle side. So we'll blow our string through and then we'll tape it off to our pull wire, which is a 12 gauge copper stranded wire. Um, we've taken every recommendation that anyone's ever given us, tried it. Uh, this is the one tool that, um, you know, we've, we've found to be the most consistent uh, as far as getting your, your harnesses through the bar. Uh, that's gonna be about a six foot section of 12 gauge copper stranded wire. Uh, you can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, hardware store. We're gonna blow it from the slot to the bottom slot out the end of the handle. <clears throat> I like to keep a little pressure on it or a little tension on it before you hit the air. All right, so we got our string through. Uh, you can tape off uh, to the string or you can just kind of tie a knot in the string, just cinch it to the pull wire. Now we're gonna feed our pull wire through the bar. We're gonna go all the way through until you have about an inch, inch and a half sticking out of the bottom slot. Just like that. Okay, so our switch harnesses, as you can see, they do not have anything on them. If, this, uh, if you're taking your stock bars off, uh, you'll notice that there is a thick uh, black electrical loom covering this whole harness. We like to remove it. Um, it makes the internal wiring process a lot easier. Um, and you know, it just is so big and bulky, it gets hung up and caught uh, on the weld penetration and that joint. So we remove it and do a single loop of electrical tape about every four or five inches just to hold the harness together. Um, we haven't had any problems as far as chafing or you know your wires rubbing over time. Um, and we've done thousands and thousands of these. So um, you know, we can say that with confidence. Okay, so we're gonna pull through our right throttle side switch harness. I uh, don't recommend making this tape job, you know, bulky. Um, I like to start two or three inches from the end of the harness and just do a nice tight and light tape job. <coughs> you want everything as thin and skinny as possible going through the bar. All right, we like to do a push-pull method here. You're going to push the harness in the bar and just pull the slack out. 
If you try to just grip it and rip it through the bar, you're gonna skin your wires up um, or break a pin off. As you can see here, these go through nicely. If you feel you know, like it's rough inside, it's just gonna be some weld penetration. Um, one of our big quality checkpoints is making sure that the parts are deburred good before they're welded together. So you're gonna feed your harness all the way through till it's uh, you know, almost bottomed out on the uh, switch housing. We'll remove our tape from the bottom here. <clears throat> now we're gonna back feed our pull wire through the end of the handle so that we can pull our throttle by wire harness through. Just pull your string through. I like to keep the string connected to the pull wire for this reason. Same thing at the bottom, you'll leave about an inch, inch and a half. Same principle here. I like to start about two or three inches from the end of the harness. Nice, tight and light tape job. Keep it all as skinny as possible. All right, same concept. You wanna push the harness through, pull out the slack. If you feel like it's getting hung up, um, back it up a little bit, try to twist the whole harness and give it another shot. Also, you can wiggle the, uh, the switch harness around. Um, sometimes that could be getting caught on it. We'll go all the way through um, until the end of our pull wire. We're gonna untape it and we will get our pull wire completely out of the way and out of the bar. We've got our pull wire untaped and we're just gonna completely remove it from the bar and we're gonna finish feeding throttle by wire harness through the end of the grip. All right, you want it to bottom out, nest in those grooves. And we're gonna go to the clutch side. Same thing here, we'll blow our string through. Let me clean this up. Same thing here, we'll blow our string through. Pull it through our handle slot. Connect my pull wire. My little knot I've made. Feed it through till you have about an inch. One thing to keep in mind, uh, the way I've got these bars on the table, be very, very careful doing it this way. Uh, you can scuff up you know, if it's a pointed bar like our Mayhem Bagger or Bison Bagger, uh, you can scuff up the points. This is a little bit newer design. I'll go over all the features and benefits of it when we get it on the bike. All right, same principle here. Start about two or three inches from the end of the harness. Tight and light. Use our push-pull method. Push, pull. So nice and easy. All 
All right, we're going to untape our harness. All right, let's get our pull wire out of the bar. All right, so we've got all of our harnesses loaded in the bar. Uh, if you have heated grips on the bike, uh, you can refer to my 2014 to 2022 Street Glide install video. Uh, it'll show you how uh, that extra step of pulling the left side uh, heated grip harnesses through the bar. Uh, it'll be the same for the 08 to 13 models. Um, so you can refer to that if you need uh, assistance or you can give us a call. But we're gonna pop our grips on, um, bolt down our uh, switch housings, and we will start repinning our plugs um, to our terminals. So we're gonna slide our throttle grip on. switch housing clamshell. Make sure that on your wiring harnesses that nothing's pinched or in a bind. Um, everything should be seated in that slot nicely. Don't want to crimp a wire there. Get our T25 bolt. Just snug it up. I don't like to tighten it all the way down. I like to do that at the end. All right, go to the other side. All right, these are Avon grips, which we sell online. Uh, they are keyed, so they key into the switch housing. Uh, if it's a stock grip that you're putting back on there, um, number one, you're gonna have to get it off of your stock bar. It's glued on there. Um, and then you'll have to re-glue it uh, to, the, to your new bars. Um, we like to use Avon grips. Uh, it's a good quality product. Uh, comes with a limited lifetime warranty. If for whatever reason your uh, foam wears out, they'll replace it for a very small fee. Uh, and they're US made. We're gonna button up our T25 bolts. Snug them down a little bit. Make sure that that grip is keyed into the housing. If it's keyed correctly, it'll move the whole assembly. All right, now we're ready to repin um, our wires to our plugs. Uh, pull up your diagrams or your pictures, you know, whatever you did to map everything out. Just pull those up, be patient, take your time. Um, you know, make sure everything is, is checked and double checked because once you get everything buttoned up, if you have a wire backwards or a wire that's flipped, it's not easy to get back in there to it. All right, this uh, yellow piece that we took out of the plug, I like to go ahead and don't pop it in there all the way. Just push it into you hear a light click. All right, this will make sure when our wires uh, go back in the plug that they go back in straight and uh, you're not fighting with realigning them when you do put that piece back in. So I've got my picture pulled up here and I'm referring to for my wire locations. Like I said, just take your time with this. Don't try to rush through it. You're gonna push your wire in until you hear a light click and you can see the end of the terminal just barely sticking out of that yellow piece inside of the plug. I'm just gonna carry on through our map one wire after another. Patient, patient, patient. All right, so I've got all my wires in on the throttle side. Uh, the yellow piece, I'm just gonna push it down and it locks into place. That one is done. I'm gonna do the throttle by wire. That way we can finish up the throttle side completely. Get a good reference on my pictures here. Make sure you got your plug turned the right way and you got the right sleeve. Put my yellow insert just barely in. You'll hear a light click when it gets to that point. 
You don't want it all the way down. Slide them in till you hear them click. All right, I'll flip it over. I got it oriented right. Same deal. Slide it in, light click. All right, push your yellow piece all the way down and that is done. All right, to our clutch side, drop our piece in, light click. You got your picture references or map and we're gonna just go through the same thing. Patient, patient, patient. Some of these wires, uh, the base color is the same. They just may have a, like a gray line or a purple line. So when you're taking your pictures, uh, just make sure that you can see that in the photo. Um, I've done it before and you take a picture of it and it just looks like two white wires. Well, you know, it, at that point it just was guess and check. So when you're doing that, just make sure you can see, you know, what's what. Here, light click. All right, so we got that plug done. Same deal. We're going to push our yellow piece down. They click into play. All right, so that completes the internal wiring. Um, now we're ready to um, mount the bars on the bike, get everything plugged up, brake and clutch levers remounted and we'll reassemble everything else. All right, so we're gonna put our bars in the riser. We've got our four riser bolts to lock down. Just kind of tuck your plugs out of the way. Just make sure when you put the top clamp on that you don't pinch any of them. I've done that before. This is not fun. All right, Torx 40. I like to just snug these bottom two up. That way you can still rotate them in the clamp. All right, so I mentioned earlier uh, about the plugs on the bike. Um, if this is a stock setup, we wanna relocate that position. Uh, I, the stock position for them is on that metal bar on the inside of the, the front fairing. Um, so we wanna reroute them to where they're just right underneath the radio. You can see them here. Um, the throttle by wire plug, it's okay, just kind of floating down there in the front. Uh, but this will allow us to plug up our stock harness without having to extend it. Plug in our left one. Here it click. Plug in our right one. Here it click. All right, then we're just gonna tuck our throttle by wire harness down the neck and we'll go to the front and plug it up. All right, throttle plug. Here it click. There you go. If you wanna zip tie that in place so that it's not, you know, just dangling everywhere, that's fine. All right, so let's, uh, Let's get our brake and clutch levers mounted. All right, so before we do that, we're gonna pop our foam off. I mentioned earlier, this is a new uh, style that we're getting ready to release. Um, at the time of shooting this video, I do not have a name for it, um, but it's an inch and a half diameter bar. Uh, so you get a nice, you know, beefy look. Um, the top here is square. It's just got a mitered corner, kind of like our outlaw. Uh, the big benefit in this setup uh, for the street glide is the overall width. Um, because, uh, because we make this the way we do, we're able to shorten this whole section so that the tip to tip width is much narrower. Um, that's a question that we, we get quite often. You know, I love the bars, but they're just a, 
a little wide for me, referring to the bison bagger and the mayhem bagger. So this one here is gonna get you at about 33 inches, 32 and a half inches uh, wide tip to tip. So it'll give you a you know, much more narrow feel. Okay, so for the clutch cable, uh, in its stock location here, coming out of this hole in the fairing, um, sometimes with it being in that location, uh, it's not long enough to mount properly um, and you know not pull, engage the clutch when you turn left or right. So what you can do is disconnect the lever uh, assembly from the cable. You can pull this cable through the hole here and run it up the A-frame and I'll show you, but it'll come out from between this trim piece underneath the ignition and the inner fairing. It cleans up nicely, looks really good. Um, so that's an option. You know, you can try it in this position uh, and see if it works before you go through that extra hassle. Um, but that is a way that you can do it without having to replace it. I'll just kind of show you briefly uh, how to do it. All right, so to get the clutch lever off, you need a pair of snap ring pliers. Um, you can get creative with two small flathead, but you've got a, um, a ring here, ring clip. It's got a hole on either side of it. You'll put your snap ring pliers in there, squeeze them. It'll spread it out to where it comes off the post there. All right. You'll pop this pin out. All right, and that'll allow that to come out. Uh, one thing we've got to do is fully uh, adjust the uh, tension out of the clutch cable um, so that it'll come out of this joint completely here. Okay, so for your uh, tension adjustment on your clutch, you've got a rubber boot here. You'll pull it all the way down. Um, You've got the nut that is physically connected to the cable, and then you've got the uh, tension nut uh, just below it. These are half inch, so you'll need two half inch box end wrenches. And we're just gonna loosen them. Spin the locking one down. And then we'll take all the tension out of it. I say all, you want to take out enough to where the clutch lever will come out of that joint there. Let's see. So you can turn it, turn it, turn it, check the lever. All right, so you're going to keep adjusting, like I said, until your cable is free. And that whole deal will pop out. All right, this white piece here. It'll pull out, that'll free the lever from the cable. All right, so your cable is free from the lever. So we're just gonna feed it, back feed it through the hole here. And like I said earlier, you can try it before you do this. Sometimes it seems to work, sometimes it doesn't. Just wanted you to see how this process works. So now our whole cable is free from the fairing. And when we remount everything, we're gonna seat it in between the inner fairing here and this trim piece underneath the uh, ignition switch. And it'll clean up nice and look good. All right, so let's reconnect our clutch cable to our lever. Put the cable in, our white piece back in to hold our cable. All right, the main assembly here. Just gonna slide in there. Slide up. All right, now we just gotta take that tension back out of it. So we're just gonna run that nut down the opposite way. All right, so just make sure that as you're tightening this up, that the ferrule and the end of this cable goes in the hole there. You'll probably have to fine tune this uh, once you get everything on the bike bolted back together, you want about an eighth of an inch of play 
in your clutch. For now, we're just gonna leave it right there. All right, so we'll drop our pin back in. Drop, put our ring, ring clip back on. All right, so now let's mount everything, our brake and clutch levers back to the bar. Uh, when you're doing this, uh, I'll show you there's a tiny uh, clutch safety switch on the back. Just wanna make sure you don't break it off uh, when you're putting this on. All right, that's the switch I'm talking about. Just wanna make sure when you put it on there that it's seated on there nicely and it's not in a bind. Uh, I've had these break on me before. Uh, you just don't want that to happen. All right, so we'll put our perch mounts back on. As you can see on this one, there was enough slack in the stock cable. We could have left it in that hole. Just want to snug it up. You don't want to tighten it all the way down. You want to be able to adjust it on our final fitment. All right, so we get our brake side. Same thing on it. There's a, a tiny switch plug for your brake lights, uh, the brake light circuit. You just wanna make sure that um, it's seated on there properly and it's not in a bind because I've seen those break off as well. Snug it up. Now we're ready to rotate our fairing forward. Um, we want to rotate it forward. I suggest sitting on the bike, getting the bars where you want them uh, before we bolt all this together. Uh, if these were quarter inch hex head bolts, um, you can use a ball end uh, quarter inch hex drive um, to get in at an angle and you can completely reassemble everything uh, and then do that very last. You can refer to my 14 and newer Street Glide video because uh, that's what that bike has on it. It's quarter inch bolts. Um, so you can adjust the position of the bars with everything reassembled. With these being Torx 40, uh, you can't do that. So rotate it forward, get them where you want them, tilt it back, lock them down, and then we'll put it back together. I'm gonna go ahead and lock these down because I got them where I want them. All right, so we'll rotate our fairing up. May have to wrestle it a little bit. Good like that. All right, let's put our fork shroud on. get our side bolts uh, for our blinkers. Uh, Keith has trailer tie downs. We'll get those, get our blinkers plugged in and our trim piece underneath the um, ignition switch in place. And we'll also reassemble our ignition. With these trailer tie downs, uh, we sell them online. Um, you know, if you trailer your bike a lot, they're a really good product. Uh, for the 14 and newer models, the Wiring harness for the blinker has to go through this slot here. Uh, on the 08 to 13 models, it does not. There's a little relief point here in the fairing. Your wire is just gonna go through there. So we'll go ahead and plug up our blinker. Uh, if you wanna zip tie blinkers in place, you know, the wire in place, you can. Get our tie down behind it. Right here's your relief point for the wire. Just want to make sure that it's seated through there so it doesn't pinch anything. Torx 40 on the bolts. Snug it up. All 
All right, line up the holes on the bottom. Start your bolt. All right, we're gonna go to the same, the other side, do the same exact thing. All right, we'll plug our blinker up. And zip tie, the harness. If you feel like it's necessary. Trailer tie down. Remember, make sure the wiring harness is in that relief point there. All right, bolt started. Line your holes up for the bottom. and tighten those all the way down. Tighten the other side up all the way too. All right, so now we're gonna get our trim piece underneath our ignition switch uh, in place. You can see here the clutch cable uh, is gonna go in between this piece and the interfering. It cleans up nice. Um, so that's where you wanna position that cable after the rerouting. You can see here though, this clutch cable on this one, I mean, there's plenty of slack. You could have easily run it through the fairing, left it where it was at, uh, but I just wanted you guys to see uh, the rerouting process. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, we'll get this bolt tightened up and we will start to put our ignition switch back in. All right, we'll put our diagram piece down first kind of clicks into place. All right, black plastic piece, go down. This metal piece with the prongs on it, go next. And then this threaded cap, tighten it down. You don't have to be super tight. That's plastic there, so you don't wanna risk breaking it. All right, so here you can see that little button I was referring to earlier on the disassembly. Um, that's what you want to press in when you turn the key counterclockwise. All right, so when we're putting this back in, you wanna make sure that that pin is, in, is, is depressed. All right, so we'll slide it in. Feel that spring engage there. All right, push it down. Turn the key to hear it click. And you are good to go. You should be able to move freely. All right, so we'll get our windshield. You can just sit it on the fender. Get our outer fairing. All right, we're gonna plug up our headlight. Remember this is an aftermarket headlight, so yours may look a little different. Only thing to really look for is your blinker wires. Make sure they're tucked out of the way or zip tied. And your headlight harness out of the way. All right. Like I said, you may want a helping hand or you can just kind of lean into it with your hip. Windshield in place. Torx 25 bolts. Got three of them here on the front. We'll go into our inner bolts on the inside. 
All right, so we'll get our first bolt here on the inside. And then this is where we want to be able to turn the front end. So that we can access this bolt. It's kind of hidden in here on the shroud. This may require a helping hand as well. This one isn't always the easiest to get lined up and get started. If you got somebody that could kind of help you wiggle it around, that'd be a good idea. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, so we want to make sure that our clutch adjustment is correct. Uh, you want about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch of play. Um, this is not bad here, but if you need to tighten up uh, that tension nut a little bit more, you can or loosen it up. You don't want it banjo tight. Uh, you just want a little bit of travel there. Um, you want to lock down the uh, lock nut so that all that stays firmly in place. And that would complete the uh, clutch cable rerouting and the uh, proper clutch um, travel. All right, so that pretty much completes uh, the reassembly uh, of the bike. Um, like I talked about earlier, this is a new style of handlebars that uh, uh, we'll be selling here uh, soon. Um, this is the month of July, 2022. So if you're watching this a year from now, you'll know what they are by then. But uh, main reason for this style is to cut down on the tip to tip width. Um, you know, guys are not wanting to ride with their hands way out. It just gives you a little tighter feel. Uh, but the assembly is pretty much done. Double check your bolts. Um, most things I just leave kind of hand tight because I may want to adjust, you know, the mirror position or the button position. Um, so just double check all that. Double check all your, your buttons. You know, make sure your volume's working, your run button, all that good stuff, blinkers. Um, and you're pretty much ready to ride. All right, guys, that pretty much completes our uh, installation on our 2013 Street Glide. Uh, this same uh, process applies to the 08 to 13 model Street Glide, Electric Glide, Ultra Classic. Uh, these are 10 inch bars that we installed using uh, stock uh, brake, clutch, and electrical uh, harnesses. Uh, went over the, the little bit of rerouting that has to be done for the electrical harnesses and the clutch. Um, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Uh, if there's any questions you have, uh, any concerns beforehand or if you get stuck in the middle of the install and need some help, uh, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, uh, touch base with us on social media. Uh, we'll be glad to help if we don't return a phone call immediately uh, or if we don't answer the phone immediately, leave us a message and we will call you back and follow up with you. But thanks again. Uh, look forward to seeing you at an event. Come by the shop and see us, uh, but enjoy the ride.